Welcome back to Veterans Minimum. I'm Tim. I'm here with Boss, and we are the baseball aficionados on the show. And we would be remiss if we didn't give you guys a little bit of a wild card preview. The wild card coming up Tuesday and Wednesday. Boss, how you feeling? Playoff baseball is here, baby. One and done. One and done. One and done. So hard. 162 games comes down to one game. Pretty crazy. I'm actually going to the AL game. Obviously, it's here. I'm a Yankee fan. You know, I figured had to splurge on tickets. They're a bit costly, to say the least. A bit. A bit costly. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, it's you know, I'm looking forward to it. It's tomorrow. And it's always been on my mind since I bought the tickets like last week. Yeah, I would imagine. I remember it's, last year when yeah. the Mets were in it. I remember all the Yankee fans telling me, well, this is not a real playoff game anyway. Like, yeah, yeah. Now now you'll see. Now you'll see. It's well, real. The Yankees did play in one in 2015. That's true. That's true. That's all everyone has to say Like as a rival. Like, oh, you played game 163. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. So let me ask you a question about this wild card game. Before we get into it, it's been four to f- four or five years now that since the wild card game has been implemented. What are you thinking? Yay or nay? Do you like it or no? I kind of like it. Um, it definitely rewards the division winners, which they needed some sort of, you know, to benefit from something. For You should be rewarded for winning your division. Wild card, I also like it. It also adds another playoff team to the mix. You're not necessarily necessarily rewarded for being a wild card team, but the first place wild card is with home field advantage, mm-hmm. which is always, I guess, you know, a good thing in baseball. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I feel like it could use some tweaks. I think I mentioned it before how we – there's been mention of two games where the home team hosts the number one wild card would host two home games and they just have to win one of them. Mm. Whereas the road team would have to win two. I kinda like that, you know, change to it. That would be a, a really big swing to the first wild card. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the I love the idea of it. I love the fact that it also doesn't affect the schedule, which is like huge for, you know, baseball. They want yeah. everything done before like November, or that's the goal anyway. But it doesn't affect the schedule because you just play two games and you jump right into your D S. For sure. I love I love the fact that it does give the the people who win the division a distinct advantage because they have the home field advantage and they don't have to face the ace twice in a series, which is giant in a five game series. But I don't know, man. It it the last two years the pennant races have been really lackluster. It kinda like took it out. Like everyone there was no excitement. You think so? You with the Cubs last year, like the Indians. Well, not in the playoffs was excitement. Okay, I'm talking about coming through the wire and getting t- getting to the playoff races. Yeah, there used to this be so year was excitement. kind of a doozy. Like that's true. I don't know. You know, I, like I don't know. I like when it's settled. It's like this year there was nothing going into the last weekend of the season. Yeah, maybe the NL wild card, but it was kind of locked up by Friday. Yeah, you know, like usually it's. It's awesome when everyone's playing on the last day at three o'clock, and you're, you're really scoreboard watching then, and you want your team to win. That's what I love about baseball. Like, it comes down to one game, game one sixty two. Who gets in? Who's going home? So we know who's in a game one sixty two. Let's get to one sixty three. We're gonna start with the AL wild card preview. Your Yanks at home taking on the surprising Minnesota Twins. I don't know anyone who picked the Twins, and for good reason. <laughs> they are the first team ever to lose a hundred games. And still, still make the playoffs. Uh, how are you feeling about this matchup? The way we're going to do this is we're going to give edges. We're going to go pitching. We're going to go hitting. Then we're going to give an X factor. And then we're going to give a winner for each one. So let's start with the pitching. Uh, Irvin Santana going up against your boy. Luis Severino. Luis Severino. The, the, newest, the newest ace of the Yankees. Not a rookie, but might as well be a rookie. That's right. You know, Newest ace of the Yankees. So... Who do you have getting the edge in this one? I'm giving the pitching edge to the Yankees. You know, Luis Severino has showed a stuff this year, like you said, f- all season long. Sure, he's had his bad outings, but who doesn't have a bad outing now and then? He also has the highest average fastball for starters in the AL at 97, 97 and a half miles per hour. So that is a huge advantage when you're throwing – his off-speed slider, which is his strikeout pitch. His fastball is also his strikeout pitch. Mm. But still a huge advantage when you can blow a fastball by anyone. Um, and then I look at the bullpen, too, because pitching in today's day and age in the playoffs is more about the bullpen than the stars, it feels like. Without a doubt. It, fe- it felt like that last year when Chapman was going two innings, Andrew Miller was being coming in in the fifth inning of the World Series in the sixth inning at any time. And the Yankees have that. They have Chad Green whose whip is .74, second in the league to Craig Kimbrell. Chad Green is the most untalked-about 
player in baseball. And that's like their fifth best receiver, if you ask some people. Reliever. Reliever. Receiver. Yeah, rest yeah receiver. I'm in football, football mode right now. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he is the best arm out of the bullpen, yeah. in my mind, without a doubt. It's Chad Green. And what, when you're talking about those bullpens, right, you got to remember that the Indians were sellers. So they, the Twins, the Twins. The Twins. Yeah, they traded their closer. Right? So right, they, they traded their closer. And, I mean, Irvin Santana, you got him on the other side. Irvin Santana, career in Yankee Stadium, has not been good. 0-5 with a 6.43 ERA. He's been better recently, and he is a gamer. He had five complete games this season. Uh, those five complete games is more than 27 teams in the league, right? So he's a gamer. He could play. He could finish games at any time. When he has his ace stuff... It's really hard to beat him. But when he doesn't have his ace stuff, you're looking at a bullpen with Hildenberger, Rodgers, and Belial at the end compared to the Yankees who have Robertson, Batances, and Chapman. You got to give me those first three all day. Yeah. I might not even, you know, throw Batances in this game just because he's been so erratic. Mm. Tommy Canley hasn't given up an earned run in September. David Robertson hasn't given up an earned run in September. Chad Green until his last outing. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Tommy Canley gave one in his last outing September in game 161, which is, you know, everything was locked up, whatever. Yeah, give it Chad up. Green hasn't given up an earth run in September. Ideally, Severino goes five, and Green, Canley, Robertson, Chapman, six, seven, eight, nine. I close the door, and I give my edge to the Yankees pitching because of that. I agree. I give the edge to the Yankees for that. It, I, a lot of people are not going to believe this coming out of me. I'm the number one Mets fan in the history of the world, honestly. But the Yankees got all the tools it takes to be a World Series team. They're hot at the right time. They got the bullpen. You saw what that's been doing the past few years. The Yankees right now plus 1,100 to win the World Series. I might have put a bet on that. I might have not. Um, so that's, that's Tim talking about. <laughs> camera, we're rolling. Yeah, right? we, got, right. we got it on all camera right, I this just want to make sure the camera's rolling. <laughs> All right, so let's go with the hitters. The cameras are rolling. The hitters are rolling for the Yankees. Um, what do you think? Who has the edge in the hitting category? Um, this is tough. Yeah. Because the Twins, since the deadline, have turned it on. Uh, Byron Buxton, who w once was a top heralded prospect in baseball, has finally put it together at the dish. We know about his defense. His defense is world-class, gold glove type status. And his hitting is starting to come around. He's hitting, I think, over 300, I know for sure, after the deadline. That's huge coming from the leadoff spot. He gets on. He's 29 from 30 stealing bases this year. Has been a beast. Yeah, 96% for those doing math at home. I got you. <laughs> uh, Brian Dozier, Joe, you know, another 37 home runs. Joe Maurer, over 300 for the first time in a couple years. Another the resurgence. Bro, Joe, uh, I mean, uh, Brian Dozier also hits the Yankees well, batting over 300 against the Yankees in particular this season. For sure. And uh, Sano coming back from the DL is a huge addition. He's one for eight, though. Hmm. Snow's one for eight since coming back from the DL. And keep in mind, the minor leagues are over, so he had to go all the way down to instructional league to see some live pitching. And when you come from instructional league to the majors, it's a, you know, a bit of an adjustment for anyone. Different kind of instruction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so that, the Twins have, do have a potent lineup. The Yankees, on the other hand, Brian Cashman needs to be really seen as one of the best GMs of all time. That's in my cap to Brian Cashman. He, I mean, Didi to Gregorius. He was a complete washout, and then all of a sudden he comes here, sets the Yankees records for home run by a shortstop in the shadow of Derek Jeter. Could not be a larger shadow cast. These young kids coming up and playing well. Uh, the guy I'm looking for is Aaron Judge, right? Aaron Judge has been historically good this year, but he's also been historically at bad at certain points. The fact that we're home, that the Yankees, I said we're. What is happening to I like me? It. I uh, like the it. fact the fact that the Yankees are home uh, does well for him. He bats thirty three points higher at home than he does on the road, and hit thirty three of his home runs at home. A Yankee record broke Babe Ruth's old record. That whenever you got, you and Babe Ruth <laughs> are in the same sentence, pretty good sentence. So I want to see what he does in the postseason. This he's a young kid. Uh, he just came into stardom. He just came into his own. Can he handle the bright lights of the postseason in Yankee Stadium? And it's going to be this game. It's, he has to show up. And I think if Aaron Judge decides to be the great Aaron Judge and what he's done all year at home instead of that one Aaron Judge that we saw for a month completely just shit the bed, uh, I think Aaron Judge is the X factor here, and I think that's the reason why the Yankees get the tip, get my nod. Yeah, I give the as much as I did talk about the Twins, I give the Yankees the edge too. I just want to read off the, the two, three, four – Five hitters from 2015, the 2015 wild card game. Chris Young, no longer with the team. Carlos Beltran, no longer with the team. 
Alex Rodriguez, no longer with the team. Mm. Brian McCann, no longer with the team. You replace that this year with Aaron Judge. Gary Sanchez, who had a historic year, most, ca- uh, most home runs for a catcher in Yankees history, who's overshadowed by Judge. Yeah. Monster follow-up year to his 20 home runs last year. And those are impressive catchers in Yankee history. Yeah. Um, led, the league, led catchers in the league in home runs as well. Uh, Didi Gregorius, as Tim mentioned, and Stalin Castro, who had 300 this year. So all young, refreshing bats, a complete change, and it only took a year and a half. Well, two years. Brian Cashman. Two full seasons. I tip my hat to you. I'll take my hat off, but I'm way too bald to be on camera <laughs> with no hat on. Um, but, yeah, so I give the Yankees the edge there. Um, yeah, I think they, you know, the Twins, like I said, are hot, but I'm giving it to the Yankees, whose run differential was also second best in baseball. We have, so we both give the Yankees the pitching and hitting uh the pitching and hitting advantage, excuse me. So what's the X factor? What's going to play a role here that could make the Twins either win or make the Yankees really put it away and have their better tools actually come to place and build a better game? Miguel Sano. Okay. 100% Miguel Sano. He missed 38 games after fouling that ball off his shin in August. And uh, like I said, one for eight since. Two appearances at DH, one pinch hitting where he went 0 for 1. Um, they're going to need him to supply that power. That power that home, had him in the home run derby at the All-Star break. He's a presence in the middle of the order, a feared presence. You know, with him, Mauer, Dozier, big power outlets for them. So is he going to be able in one game to put it together after missing 38 games and not looking the part so far through his three games back? That big bet is definitely going to be something. My X factor is the catchers and not at the plate behind the dish. I call him the catchers wild. That's right cleverness uh gary sanchez everyone knows he's had a struggle with pass balls uh he's not the best of defenders back there mike piazza-esque um in terms of very much in there for his bat and not exactly for his defense um jason castro on the other hand though allowed two pass balls last time irvin santata started in yankee stadium and the yankees and the yankees stole four four bases in that game if the Yankees can steal four bases in this game, I see the Minnesota Twins having a hard time winning it. So th- keeping the ball in front of you if you're the catcher could be the X factor in this game. I really like that as the X factor. So now that we have all the factors in the factor box, boss. Fact- the facto box. The facto box. Who you got winning? Um, the Yankees. Who would have guessed? Surprise, oh, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> the Yankees, I think they put it all together, their lineup. I think if they could scratch across – Three runs early. Santana throws strikes, so the Yankees got to be swinging, and I think swinging early in counts. I'm not worried about building his pitch count up. Um, you know, he's he's a strike thrower, so get after him, put the pressure on him. You know, make him work around the zone a little bit. Don't let him just live over the, the plate all day, and get some runs early. Get two two runs, three runs early, then hand it over to the bullpen. You know, Severino's probably you know if they win. I'm not saying they're going to win. If they win, he's going to be starting game three on regular rest. Mm -hmm. So he can go as deep as he wants in this game. True that. So I like the Yankees here, man. The Twins are very good. They've had a phenomenal year. But they're playing with house money at this this point. You know, 100 loss team, as you said, as we started this off. And now look at them. You know, good. I think it's the Yankees game to lose. The first thing that goes through my mind or what went through any – could it go through anyone's mind when we're talking about – how does a 100 team, 100 loss team become a playoff team, especially when they're 12 games under 500 against current playoff teams right now? How could a team with those kind of stats make the playoffs? Well, first of all, they have 85 wins. It's a down year in the AL. Second, they feasted on the bottom of the AL Central. They're 12 games over 500 on those bottom feeders, right? So a lot of things went in the Twins' favor that doesn't support them. On top of that, the Yankees swept them. Eight, uh, through September in their last series, September 18th through the 20th. Right. And everything points in the Yankees' direction. So I'm going with the Twins! Fuck you, Yankees! Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Let's go Mets! <laughs> yeah. My 12-year-old child in my heart will not let me pick the Yankees, even though I may have a little money on the Yankees. You may be the only person not picking the Yankees in this game. You know what? And, uh, but, I stand and, alone. And you know what I don't like? Like, no one's giving the Twins a chance, and this is when the Yankees will slip up and lose a one-or-done type game. I will say one, one, one little thing. 
The Twins destroy fastballs. They do. They hit velocity well. The Yankees have velocity. It's power. From, it's power on from power. From the starter to the bullpen, especially this game. And it's it's all it's going to be old fashioned ball in this one. It should be a good one. Uh, let's turn it over to the NL. The NL we have two NL West powerhouses, and when I say powerhouse, I mean these guys can crank the fucking ball. Listen. The Diamondbacks and the Rockies. Let's give the matchup without further ado. Rockies at Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks, who had a better record than the NL Central winning Cubs, by the way, and are playing in this one-and-done game. Another flow in the wild card system. Mm. But that's for another day. Okay. So uh, let's go with the pitching matchup first. Who you got? I'm going with the Rockies. Wow. Okay. The Rockies, not in cores either. So I think that's, you know, well, that you know, it's an even advantage for either team. They're both playing in cores, you know, if, if it was at cores. But uh, John Gray. 4-0 in his last five starts with a 2-1 ERA. Has come on hard. He missed a lot, of, a big chunk of time in the middle of the season with, due to a toe injury he suffered in San Francisco. But I like me some John Gray. We were just listening to our MLB preview show. We were both talking him up mm-hmm. uh, before the year that I thought this was his breakout year. And uh, he did come together. He had put together a really good season despite the injury. And I also like the bullpen. The Rockies went out and spent this offseason and went at the trade deadline to pick up Pat Nishek. Pat Neshek, Greg Holland, who's the biggest bargain in baseball right mm-hmm. now at the end of that bullpen. For sure. Mike Dunn, a lefty specialist, who didn't have all that good of a year, pitching to like a 4-6 ERA. But when it comes to getting lefties out, he's very effective. And then Jake McGee, who was a closer at one point, when they took the stress off him of being their closer this year, he had a much better year than he did last year. So I like the bullpen edge more importantly than the starter's edge. I think Granke is the way better pitcher. Then uh, John Gray, he's 13-1 at home this year. How could you not like Granky at home in a one-game playoff? But, like I said during the AL game, this is a game of bullpens nowadays. And I, I give that edge to the Rockies. I agree the Rockies' bullpen is better, but here's my thing. When you are going up and in a one-game playoffs, you want a veteran presence. You want someone who's been there. Now, in the other, in the other game, we, didn't see, we don't see any veteran presence. Irvin Santana doesn't have a lot of playoff experience. And Luis Severino obviously has no playoff right. experience, right? In this case, you got a guy in Zach Grinke who is a former Cy Young winner, has tons of playoff experience, has ton, tons of uh, race experience, uh, pennant race experience, just tons of experience. He's been on the bottom of the bottoms and the highest of the highs in his career. Uh, I just him and, Now, him and John Gray, he doesn't blow away John Gray in any category. They have very similar numbers. But it's going to be hard for me to pick against John, uh, pick against Granky, excuse me, just because of that factor. Even with Granky's last poor outing at home against the Marlins, where he gave up seven runs, uh, still a two point eight seven ERA at home. It was a two point four earlier before that outing. And don't forget, thirteen at one at home is impressive to say the least. I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit, but don't forget the fact that this game is p- being played in Arizona, as opposed to Colorado, is a giant, giant, giant. Giant, giant deal. Cores, baby. Let's go to the hitting category. Uh, who you got? The Rockies. Okay, you got two Rockies. Rockies. See where this is going. Clean sweep. Okay. Listen, you have the NL batting champ, Charlie Chuck Nasty Blackman. One hundred RBIs from the leadoff spot. Not thirty-seven to dingers. Mm. Okay. Yes, everyone will say cores, but these numbers are nothing to frown at. Uh, Arenado, potential MVP candidate in the middle. You have. Former batting champ DJ LeMahieu in the, in, the, in the two hole or towards the bottom. Mark Reynolds, who stepped up big time for this year for them after yes, Ian Desmond's did. injury. Um, Cargo, who the last time, he's their only roster player from the last time they were in the playoffs in 2009, was 6 for 11 that series against the Phillies. So he has that October experience or Rocktober experience, as the oh, Rockies like rock. to call it. Um, Rocktober, I like that. Yeah, I like the Rockies, man. And and that's not to slight the Diamondbacks because their lineup is loaded and puts man. up a ton of offense. But my lean is toward the Rockies here, who a team who just hits and pl- and built their team around hitting. I'm going to lean D-backs on this one. I know it's hard to think about. All right, the Rockies obviously have the better lineup if you're looking at it player for player, although it's pretty close. It is very close. Yeah, these guys can rake. Um, but I'm looking at one guy. J.D. Martinez. Since he has been acquired, this team has had a completely different feel to them, a completely different type of swagger. Um, And he's doing his best work right now. 16 home runs in September. That is the record for the NL. Uh, 
it, on the season, he's batting 303, 45 home runs, on over 1,000 OPS, really dominating the baseball. And when you talk to him and you talk to his teammates, you could see that they want it. They want it bad. They were. They think. They feel like they were supposed to be here last year. If you remember about talking about baseball previews, the Cinderella team that was the Rockies this year was the Diamondbacks last year. Everyone was on the Diamondbacks after they signed Zach Greinke. They shit the bed after they were a few talking injuries. about blowing it up at the end of the year. They, they were talking about blowing it up. Luckily, they didn't, and they added a giant piece in JD Martinez, who he he probably should be the NL MVP, except he didn't play the whole year in the NL. Yeah. Yes. But Tw- it, my bad, at country. He has yeah. 29 homers and 65 RBIs since joining them in mid July. Unbe- or late July. I shouldn't say mid July. That's unfucking believable. Yeah. Honestly. That so. four home run game comes to mind against the, the Dodgers. Yeah. Keep in mind, these two teams are the only two teams in baseball to beat the Dodgers in a season series this year 10 9 and 11 8. 11 I, 8 were the D backs, 10 9 Rockies. I'm not going to lie, I didn't know that. And you just took me aback a little bit of how good the Dodgers are. Yeah. If, if, in case anyone forgot how good the Dodgers are so far this season, we're going to get to that, I promise. Uh, not here. We're going to be go, going over that in our baseball preview. Look out for that on our iPod. Uh, I mean, on our podcast, excuse me. If you got an iPod. If you got your iPod, do it. Hey. More likely have an iPhone. I'm sure you still have an iPod. You, like, somewhere. Crack me as an iPod guy. Dude, I, I used to carry around my Blackberry with so much pride when iPhones first came out. <laughs> Yeah, I had a BlackBerry till like the last possible day. Me too, man. Like I used to love the iPhone. keyboard. So my BBM contacts were dwindling, and I was like, all right, well, yeah, you know. no, one, no one wants a BBM anymore. <laughs> yeah. Remember when BBM almost made a comeback a few years ago? No, this has gone off the rails. All right, <laughs> um, who do you got in this series? Uh, X Factor, maybe. Who's your X Factor in this series? <laughs> uh, AJ Pollock. Okay. Who missed a ton of time? Came back this year. Um, I think him and David Peralta, who, who may hit one two, should hit one two. Uh, are going to be the table setters. I think they need to get on because we know, like we talked about, Charlie Blackman hitting champ. It will be on base for them. Or should, you know, so his average dictates he will be on base that game. And DJ LeMahieu is capable of getting on base. So I think these two got to get on for the J.D. Martinez's, for the Paul Goldschmidt's, for the Jake Lambs who we didn't even talk about, who had Mm -hmm. a low year in average but still hit the cover off the ball when it comes to the dingers. Um, Yeah, those two got to get on base for for the meat of the order. For sure. Um, my X factor is the home field advantage. Uh, it's hard to ignore the splits between the Rockies uh, on the road and the Rockies at home. It's been like that since the Rockies have had Vinny Castilla in the middle of their lineup um, and Dante Bichette. Like it's, it's just been that way the whole time. The, uh, this year, the Diamondbacks are 11-8 and eight against the Rockies, and the Rockies are only batting 200 at Chase Field, formerly known as the Bob. Uh, but... I think it's a big, big X factor. Those bats usually go silent when they enter Arizona. And if you have one game, if those bats decide to go silent again, uh, I don't think that the pitching staff, even though John Gray is hot, even though the bullpen is better, I don't think the Rockies pitching staff is going to have what it takes to win a close, tight, low-scoring game. I think it has what it takes to win a 6-4 game or a 7-5 game. But I don't know if it has what it takes to win a 2-1 game or a 3-2 game or a 4-2 game, something like that. For sure. I got the Rockies. Um, we talk about the bullpens. Fernando Rodney, to me, is the biggest enigma in baseball. Mm. Whether he's shooting arrows or arrows <laughs> are getting shot over the wall due to his you know, inability to get outs sometimes in clutch situations where he's giving up dingers. You know, He pitches to a 4-plus ERA, it seems like, every season as a closer. So I don't trust this guy to get the last out at all. Archie Bradley had a really good year for them. We didn't talk about the... The D backs spend that much, but Archie Bradley, phenomenal year, failed starter, former top pick, lights out setup man for them. I think you know he should be the closer, but anyway, another story for another day. Um, but Rockies, like I said, bullpen wins games, and I think they got that strength, and I think it's gonna be like a six five game. So I think you know Rockies take one on the road, and the Yankees take one at home. I'm going with the home team on both of these. Honestly, I I think the Yankees are gonna win. I picked the Twins to be More a like hater. It. Thank God, but. You know, I'm still going with the Twins. I'm just happy you Staying got that strong. out before we got it. I'm, go- I'm going with the home team on this one, though. I'm going with the Diamondbacks. I can't trust the Rockies' bats on the road. Uh, you know, I know I'm, I might just be conditioned that way because I've been looking at it since 95 or whenever the Rockies ended up coming into the league, somewhere around there, 92, whatever, something like that. And since then, they haven't been the same team on the road as they have been at home. I think that continues. Of course, baby. Zach Grinke is the veteran. He's the ace, and I think he shuts him down. Uh, That's all for this one. 
Uh, if you want to follow me at Timpatrop, if you want to follow this guy at Endevito27 on Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to check out Veterans Minimum, the podcast. We come to you twice, twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday. And we're coming with videos on this channel, so don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget <laughs> to leave comments. Don't forget to leave likes and all that good stuff. Share us. We'll see you next week. Let's go, Yanks. Peace out.